Here we are, day number nine of our 14-day crash course. We're going to tackle how to lead people to Jesus and why. And i got to tell you, we're coming right out of the gate. This was an interesting one for me because when I first built this method of mentoring, how to mediate, teach, and confront, I assumed all Christians were super confident and comfortable leading non-Christians to Jesus. Boy, was I wrong. I started to research and I found a few different reports. I think one was from Barna and I found a few others statistically on how many Christians have never led someone to Christ. How many Christians in America, percentage wise, have never led someone to Jesus literally? So they've taken it upon themselves to speak the truth and to share the gospel with a neighbor, a friend, or a family member. And because of that, somehow that person made a decision for Christ. I was shocked in my own immaturity and na naivety to find out that less than 15%, some reports say less than 10% of all Christians have led someone to Christ. That means 9 out of 10 have not and will never. Go to a church of a thousand, out of the 1,900 have not and probably will never. If I trained 100 mentor couples in a church, out of the 100 mentor couples, 90 of them have not and probably never will. This is a problem. We put way too much pressure on pastors and churches and sermons to do it all. And God really wants to use all of us to spread his word. The reason I've already mentioned in prior segments, when you leverage people to Jesus Christ, the first and most powerful method to use to leverage humans is relationship. And I'm in a intimate, private, deep relationship with couples that I mentor. I'm in a wonderful position to lead them to Jesus. And my senior pastor doesn't even know who they are. So why would I not lead him to Jesus during my 10 weeks of marriage mentoring and put all the pressure on my pastor and hope that they just show up on a day that he happens to do an altar call or he evangelizes and tries to lead him to Jesus? Well, instead of being cynical or judgmental, I started to quiz lay people and I asked two key questions. Why aren't you or why have you never led someone to Jesus? And what would you like to see different? What would you like to see so that you would? Here's what I heard. Number one answer, thousands of people have said this, fear of rejection. Number one reason, I fear rejection. Number two, they said this, I don't know of a method that I like. I don't like the handing out tracks, okay? I don't like shouting from the street corner, okay? And, and it created all this awkwardness. So I took all this information, sat down for weeks and weeks and weeks, and in our mentor training manual and in our mentor training program, I've resolved both of those concerns. We've created a method on how to lead people to Jesus over the course of 10 weeks in our home to validate, see if they're saved, make sure they're saved. If they're not saved, give them a chance to become saved. It's a method that mentors would really like and that mentors would follow and it's clear cut. Secondly, I have a very special section on exactly what to do if you are rejected to make it a non-issue during the mentoring. If somebody rejects Jesus during my 10 weeks, we don't make that a deal breaker, a showstopper. We don't make it into a big dramatic moment and we don't stop mentoring them. I even, say, I even say it somewhat like this. I say to somebody who rejects Jesus, I say, okay, well, let's continue mentoring. I had a guy one time where I said that and he goes, wait a minute, I didn't expect to be treated this way. And I said, it's your eternity. And he goes, well, Matt, um, would you mind meeting with me all alone and diving into the Bible? What just happened? He rejected Jesus on a very specific night that I, let, I tried to lead him to the Lord. I said, okay, let's continue. And then instead of it being awkward and horrible, he said, would you meet with me all alone and dive into the Bible? What just happened? 
So I want mentors to realize that rejection, if you, if you handle this in a certain way, it's not going to be awkward. It's okay. And I did meet with this, this gentleman alone, and to this day he's not a believer. So I don't give false hope that everybody gets saved, because not everybody gets saved. Most do. Our percentages are super high on who does choose to follow Christ, but some don't. But we don't make it a showstopper. Here's my theory. That maybe during the 10 weeks that I mediated, I taught the gospel as much as you would absorb, and I confronted your heart, and I confronted your sin, and I tried to lead you to Jesus, and you weren't ready in my little 10-week window, but I still gave you Jesus. I gave you all that I had. My hope is I drew you closer to the church, and you had a really good experience, and you want more, because that's how God works. And maybe I'm going to give you homework to get deeper involved in my church, because that's what I will do, and that's what mentors are trained to do. And three months later, after I'm done with you, mentoring that is, you start coming to my church and sitting right there in the sanctuary, you get born again. Would I still not celebrate that? Of course I would. So my theory is that God used me to help that person get three more rungs up the ladder of salvation. But it just wasn't on my watch. It wasn't during my time that he made a decision for Christ. And I'm okay with that. But if I find out that he got saved three months later in my church, I played a role in that. So we don't make rejection a showstopper. There are certain things that we will stop mentoring over. There are extreme situations and cases and attitudes and, and behaviors where we will stop the mentoring process. But not if someone is taking steps towards God, steps towards rounding the bases, putting effort into the marriage, into the process, and they're showing an element of teachableness. If those are all in play, we're going to continue. And we're going to hope that maybe afterwards they'll get born again. And I hope this doesn't offend you. I hope you see our hearts and our spirit in this. But we have seen countless couples saved with this program. And leading people to Jesus, the whole section in my mentor training is very bold and it's very poignant and it's almost mandatory that mentors do it. We're combining marriage mentoring with evangelism and putting them together. That's one of the components that was missing before we built this in all of those other programs that I would consider our competition. We wanted to be 100% clear. We want to know if you know Jesus. We want to give you every chance to believe and follow him in our 10 weeks of mentoring. We're not going to ever let somebody slip through without giving them a chance. And so I'm hoping that you see our hearts in this and that it excites you and you want to partner with us. So that's it for this segment. In our next segment, we're going to talk about the duration of marriage mentoring. How long should it be? Um, why should it be that long? Do you have any leeway? So we'll dive into that tomorrow. Be blessed.